<clears throat> oh, hey, Whiskey Sam. Uh, I'm sorry, dude. Uh, I know you haven't got to be in a video for a while, but we're not doing all the um, all the, <clears throat> the costumes and the characters and stuff this time. We just, we just don't have the time and energy to, to put one of those together. Sorry. No sports. Uh, no sports this time. Sorry, buddies. Uh, is that okay? Yep. Yeah. Oh, thanks for understanding, dude. I. Uh... Oh, oh. Oh no, he's gone. He's gone. Yeah, he's uh. No, he's fully gone. I guess I'll just uh. <clears throat> um, I'm not. Are we still rolling? Yeah. All right. I'll. I'll, I'll just start. <clears throat> hey everyone, this is Ira. Welcome to State of the Channel, a supposedly monthly show, which I haven't had the energy to make an episode of for, um, let's call it several months. Unfortunately, my day job really kicked me directly in the gut these past few months, and on top of that, I've been having some chronic health problems, which suck away what little energy I have left, so I've frankly just been too exhausted and burnt out to function properly, and uh, a lot of projects I was excited about kind of got put on the back burner. Um, I wish I could create more delicious content for you all, but as long as I have to work this day job, I'm afraid periods of less activity like this are probably going to keep happening. I'm only about 10% of the way to the Patreon goal I'd need to hit to quit my job and do this full time, so for the foreseeable future, I'll just keep doing my best. And please know that I'd be creating more content if I could, and I hope that someday I can use all my energy for this. Anyway, updates. I've got a whole lot of updates since the last of these videos. Uh, first of all, new webcam, right? I got all this uh, resolution here. So now you can see in full HD just how sad my apartment looks. That's not a low quality camera, my friends. My home is just very beige. And since the furniture came with the apartment, I uh, can't really get rid of it and replace it with, uh, with nicer stuff. So. Uh... Anyway, news. I stream now? Yeah, that's right. I've started streaming regularly on Twitch at twitch.tv slash iRepliceGames. Turns out there's a good reason why a lot of YouTubers have started shifting more of their attention over there. It's just a better platform. So barring special circumstances like holidays and illness, uh, I stream each Wednesday and Saturday at 6 p.m. Central European time. That's 5 p.m. in the UK and 12 noon in the Eastern U.S. time zone. Wednesdays, I've been playing some multiplayer Stardew Valley with the community, and Saturdays, I usually do Dwarf Fortress. Come join in if you can. It's a really nice group of folks hanging out, and we'd love to see you there. I'll even be doing the occasional charity stream, playing something special, like Twitch Sings, to raise money for a good cause. To keep up with announcements for special streams like that, join my public Discord or follow me on Twitter. And while we're on games... Everyone's talking about their games of the year for 2019. Now, I'm fortunate enough that I get to try a lot of games each year while I do reviews and first looks for them and stuff. So I'd like to take this opportunity to give a shout out to a few that I thought were really special. First off, I'd like to mention A Short Hike. I've seen this game on a lot of game of the year lists for 2019. I have to say, kind of surprised? I did get the game, played a lot of it, and yes, it's lovely. It's visually impressive, it's relaxing and sweet and wholesome. It's a great game. You should play it if you can. But what surprises me is how many people are talking about it. Not because it isn't good, but just because it doesn't stand out to me that much when compared to other wholesome indie games. I think a lot of the people talking about how amazing A Short Hike is usually only play AAA games. And in comparison to those, of course, it's really special but I'd suggest that those people should seek out and play more little indie games, because there are loads of wholesome, sweet, fun, and well-made indie games out there, which are just as impressive. They deserve attention, too. Just look at the rest of my channel. I'm sure you'll find some more gems in there which didn't get lucky enough to get the attention they deserve. But yeah, a short hike is definitely real good. Now on to my actual favorites of the year. Electric Sleep is a game I did a review for way back in February. It's sort of an interactive fiction game, and the visuals are mostly just illustrations, but to me that does not detract at all from its brilliance. 
It's all about how our emotional state shapes our perception of the world and the decisions we make. And that's a lesson I think we could all use to be reminded of now and then. Check out my review of the game for more details. There will be a link in the description. Welcome to Art School. With the caveat that the tank controls are pretty clunky and the noisy visuals can make it pretty hard in the eyes, not to mention on video compression, uh, the core concept of this game is great. You wander around this abstract landscape with prompts given to you by your AI art professor, you collect tools and a few colors to work with, and you draw. The prompts, combined with the limited drawing tools, really got my brain working in new ways and got those creative juices flowing. It's very good fun. I streamed this game a while back, and you can check out the stream archive in the description. Kind Words isn't really a game, to be fair, but it still goes on my list because it's one of the most wholesome and touching experiences I had this year. While you listen to some extremely chill lo-fi beats, you exchange letters with real other players. People can write an anonymous request for responses, and usually it's people looking for advice or reassurance, but sometimes it's just folks who want to say hi, or get ideas, or share something interesting. You browse these requests, write anonymous responses, and you share cute stickers. You can also make your own requests for responses, or write simple positive thoughts that float through the game's paper airplanes for people to catch. I was wary of trying kind words at first because it seemed like it would be a breeding ground for trolls, but honestly, I haven't seen a single example of a person behaving badly in this game at all. Everyone is really positive and supportive and kind. When I'm having a good day, it's nice to go on there and send people reassuring responses. When I'm feeling down, I can ask for some good vibes and I always get them. And the music is great to just leave on in the background while I write. Finally. The game has a lot of links to mental health resources as well for people who need more help than a reassuring note from a stranger can offer, so it's just a great project overall and I highly recommend checking it out. Welcome to Eastshade. I have always loved the concept of a beautiful open world fantasy game, but 100% of those games always seem to center around combat, which is, is not really my thing. Eastshade seems to be a game made specifically for people like me. It's a 3D, open-world game with a beautiful fantasy setting. But instead of fighting and killing enemies, you paint landscapes, solve puzzles, and run errands to help people. In most games, I'm rather infamous for getting distracted by the beauty of my surroundings, but this is a game that's entirely about that. Finding the right views so you can paint them. I should mention, though, that there are quite a few notable issues with this game. Some of the quests have bugs that make it impossible to complete them unless you do things in a very specific order. Uh, it's possible to place a vehicle in such a way that you can't get on it or even pick it back up again. And some of the quests are very obtuse in terms of figuring out how to solve them. Uh, but for sheer beauty, positivity, Ishe definitely goes on my list. I did a stream of this one on Christmas Day, actually, so check out the video description for a link to the archive of that if you want to have a look. I'll be talking about this next game in its native language, so if you don't understand, feel free to turn on the English subtitles by clicking the CC button at the bottom right of your YouTube player. Honk, 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 honk. Honk 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 Here, in the middle of the hurricane, there was a house. It was fine tucked in below the overhanging rock. Wooden beams, mud brick walls, shutters. Large enough for two families to argue over. It would have been measly on Iox and grand on Elbereth. But here, it was impossible. And finally, I'd like to talk about Heaven's Vault. If I had to pick one game that stood out above all others in 2019, Heaven's Vault would be it. It's an astounding achievement, and I cannot believe more people aren't talking about it. Somehow this game creates an entirely new setting, 
and introduces it in such a way that it doesn't feel confusing or disorienting at all. The game is broken into three main parts. There's the exploration of the moons of the nebula, which you do on foot, accompanied by your robot. There's sailing between the moons, where you control the ship and float along space rivers. And then there's deciphering the ancient language, which you work out bit by bit as you try to translate the inscriptions on ancient relics you find. Overlaying all this is the mystery of the nebula, as well as smaller stories about the people who live in it. If this all sounds like a lot to take in, it should be? And yet, at no point did I feel confused or disoriented or overwhelmed. The dialogue and text and story all flow so naturally that I hardly had to think about it, other than to wonder and be amazed by what I was seeing and hearing. And the game is all the more amazing because you can do many things in almost any order you choose, yet however you do it, it all feels like it's the right way. In most games where you can choose which order to do things or go places, it can feel a bit disjointed. But in Heaven's Vault, it all flows perfectly, and every choice you make is reflected in how the story progresses. It honestly feels like the game developers and writers literally accounted for every single possible choice you could make in every single possible order, and I genuinely have no idea how they did it. Throw in brilliant writing overall, beautiful visuals, and beautiful voice acting for the main character, this is a game you cannot miss. Oh, and did I mention that after you've played through the game once and reached one of several possible endings, you can start again with a new game plus mode where you retain all the words of the ancient language that you've learned? Every playthrough unravels more of the story. I can't imagine that I'll ever get tired of this game. Even just jumping in the ship and sailing on the rivers is so relaxing and fun. If you possibly can, grab Heaven's Vault and give it a try. Well, that's enough about games for now. Let's talk about other stories written stories. You know, like, reading? I read a lot. I also write. In fact, I write for a living. At my day job, I write what I'm told to write. Honestly, it's, um, it's pretty, pretty draining. But I've also got it back into writing for myself. As I mentioned in the last State of the Channel video, I have a blog on WordPress where I post stories. Although previously I offered early access to the stories to patrons, the problems I mentioned earlier with being burnt out and unwell have made it impossible to keep up with that, so I have switched up the patron rewards, and I'll get to that in a bit. But if you haven't checked out my blog, consider doing so. It's at irreallyprose.wordpress.com, and I usually update it three times per week. There are three stories going on at any point. Currently on Back to Reality Mondays, there's a story about a world where people feel a need for someone else to scratch their nose for them when it itches. Told from the perspective of Pete, a guy who doesn't feel that need. It's a metaphor. On Sci-Fi Wednesdays, you can still read the ongoing Into the Forest, a story about a post-apocalyptic group of scouts going on a mission into the Forest of Steel. This one will be wrapping up in the next few weeks, actually, so don't miss the conclusion. Finally, on Fantasy Fridays, a student at a magic school is sharing an essay about why she believes her world isn't real. If any of those sounds interesting to you, go check them out. And if you prefer to wait until stories are finished before you read them, I have good news. I'm starting to release e-reader-friendly, downloadable versions of all the completed stories for patrons at the lowest tier, and I'll be releasing audiobook versions as well for those who prefer to listen rather than read. Those will be available on YouTube very soon, as well as in a downloadable form for patrons. And that brings me nicely to patron stuff. First off, I have a new $1 tier available. You can now sign up for one single US dollar per month to be a junior minion and help support me and take one more step towards my goal of freedom from my day job and the ability to create far more and more diverse content. Just $1 really can make a difference, and I even have rewards for that tier. Access to the aforementioned e-reader-friendly downloadable versions of my finished stories, access to the occasional patron-only behind-the-scenes video, and a title on my Discord server that gives you access to a patron-only chat channel. If you can spare a single dollar per month, friends, it can really make a difference. So consider it. The other tiers have been updated a bit as well. Uh, minions at $5 per month get all the Junior Minion rewards, as well as downloadable audiobook versions of my finished stories as they become available. Minions also still get access to my game servers. Currently, the servers include a winter-themed modded Minecraft creative building world, which will be open until at least the end of January, a Starbound server, where a few of us are actually having a great time, and also a few servers hosted by my creator group, The Simpletons. 
At the moment, the available servers are a Minecraft Vanilla 1.14.4 server, a Builder's Paradise server, and an Enigmatica 2 server. It's not too shabby for just five bucks a month, if I do say so myself. And if you're feeling even more generous, at $15 and up, you can become a senior minion. In addition to all the rewards already mentioned, you will also get permanently free access to the articles I write on Medium. And I'm working on a new one right now, actually. As well as access to servers shared with fellow creator Saffron. Right now, those servers are Minecraft, Glacial Awakening, Seablock Rustic Waters, and a vanilla Minecraft 1.15 server. Finally, the most generous among you can become Minion Overseers at $30 and up. These top-level supporters get their name in big letters in the credits at the end of streams and videos, as well as extra perks like access to unfinished drafts of articles and exclusive input on my videos and writing. Good news, friends. That's all for my advertising. But before I move on, I'd like to send out a truly heartfelt thank you to all of you who have so generously supported me so far. When I first started a Patreon account, I honestly didn't expect to get any patrons, but you folks have consistently been supportive and allowed me to do things like host game service for us all to play on, purchase new games for the channel, and just generally give me hope that like maybe one day I won't have to just kill myself each day, struggling to keep up with my day job, and instead I'll be able to focus 100% of my energy on making videos and streaming and writing and eventually writing music and puzzles again, as well as other creative things I just do not have the time and energy to work on now. Right now I'm a little over 10% of the way to freedom, and honestly it's really amazing. To those of you who just don't have the spare money to share with me, please know I appreciate you as well. I don't try to play YouTube's algorithm, and I never will. Please stop telling me to, people in the comments. So I really rely on all of you to spread the word of mouth. Tell your friends and family, share videos on social media, all of that, it makes so much more of a difference than you'd think. And of course, Keep watching. Do it for you folks. I love you. That's enough about me. So for the rest of this video, I'd like to spread some of that love on to some other creators whose work has affected me this past year. Their work really means a lot to me, and I think it might mean something to you all as well. If any of these channels sounds interesting to you, I'll put links in the description to all of them. Send them some love too. They deserve it. Yes. Okay, we can write a story. Oh, this is so exciting. <laughs> I, I feel like there's there's so much potential. First up is Warm Ham. I only discovered Warm Ham recently thanks to a raid on one of my Twitch streams. Warm Ham, who formerly focused on speedrunning games, now plays beautiful but obscure indie games on Twitch. I was fortunate enough to catch one of those streams recently and persuaded me to grab Library of Babel on itch, which has proven to be a valuable purchase. Also, Warm ham is just, it's just fun to say. Warm ham. If you enjoy my videos on random indie games, go check out Warm Ham on Twitch. You will not regret it. Warm ham. It's just nice to take a break and appreciate things that are going on around us. Next up is Atomic Shrimp. This guy has a variety of different videos and they're all fascinating. I discovered him thanks to some hilarious and well-edited videos about baiting email scammers, but I also enjoy watching him wander through the woods foraging for mushrooms, trying odd foods in a can, and that's to say nothing of the Wobble Dog. What on earth am I talking about? Go check out Atomic Shrimp's channel to find out. Cheers, good morning. I owe a lot to Blind IRL for sending a part of his audience to one of my very first Twitch streams, even though he was still mid-stream at the time. Thanks to that little boost, I've regularly found myself with a far bigger audience for my Dwarf Fortress streams than I would probably otherwise have as such a new streamer. He also streams Dwarf Fortress, as well as some other games, as frankly, just a nice person to chat with. Go check him out on Twitch. Yes, thanks to your protection, we now have a bountiful home out here in the forest. A safe place where we can exist for generations, happily raising our badgers. The future is bright, dwarves. Right, well... Several years have passed, and the Angry Forest has become an absolute hellscape. Things are advancing forward and backwards in many ways. I like to think we're running kind of a cult of the badger at this point, with the dwarves kind of reverting to a strange animalistic society, tribe, if you will. There's, I mean, they're constantly fighting. Most of this is blood in here. Ghosts. There are several. Um, our leader died at some point, killed by some other dwarf. The population is down to about 67 dwarves. 
down from 99, remember, and things are definitely spiraling out of control. Of course, I can't talk about Dwarf Fortress without mentioning the famous Krug Smash. Aside from his direct support of me and my work, for which I am grateful, Krug brightens my day every single time he releases a video. If you've never heard of Dwarf Fortress, or if you've heard of it but were put off by its steep learning curve and confusing interface, you need to go watch Krug Smash's videos. Through meticulous editing and loads of hand-drawn illustrations, Krug manages to take the incredible stories buried in this procedural game and make them understandable and palatable to everyone, and just amazing to watch and listen to. He might even persuade you to try playing the game. But even if he doesn't, his videos are guaranteed to entertain you. Go check him out. Hey everybody, 47 Mark 4 here, back with another episode of Absolute Mech. All right, so today we're gonna get ourselves a little bit of automation. Now I'd like to take a moment to shout out to one of my fellow simpletons, 47 Mark 4. My friends, this guy has been through a lot, especially in terms of his health. He also makes amazingly polished Minecraft mod packs and high quality engaging videos about them. Especially since I'm currently dealing with my own chronic health problems, I am blown away by how much he manages to create and produce, and how positive and inspiring he manages to be. On the other hand, I also appreciate that now and then he makes a video where he just talks to us directly and tells us how hard things have been. Sometimes on the internet, it can seem like everyone's life is going great, and it means a lot when someone pulls back the curtain a bit and says, Yeah, things are really hard, but I'm gonna keep doing my best. Mark, you rock super hard, and you help keep me going. Thank you. <laughs> Whoops. Did not mean to shoot that rocket right there. I was too powerful for any enemy to kill me, so I had to kill myself. In terms of pure positivity, I also want to send some love to Zach Oyama. You might know this dude from College Humor or the Dimension 20 series on Dropout, but he also streams, usually a few times per week, and these are some of the most positive and uplifting experiences I have. However dark, or gritty, or violent, or scary the game he's playing is, he just has a way of making it wholesome and fun, and his community is just as lovely as he is. No matter how bad I feel or how rough things have been, as soon as Zack starts streaming, I am guaranteed to feel better. A huge thank you to Zach and his community for brightening my day on a regular basis. Wait a second, 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 wait a second. There is no reason for it to start back that fast, okay? There's absolutely no reason at all whatsoever. And speaking of Zach's community, I also want to shine a little spotlight on one particular member of that community. Ricky's Arcade. Ricky hangs around the streams and performs acts of random generosity, gifting subscriptions to just about everyone in the chat. And then, this guy had the nerve to come to my streams, and subscribe to me as well? Well, aside from dropping gifts on everyone, Ricky also has his own Twitch channel where he's been streaming God of War. Unfortunately, I never managed to catch him live because of time zones, but I have gone back and watched some of the archives, and he's very pleasant to watch. Unfortunately, it just doesn't seem like too many people have found him yet, so right now, if you would, my friends, head to Ricky's channel, link in the description, give him a follow. Check out his streams if you can, and if you manage to watch him live, drop a hello and an extra thank you from me. Here's a bold statement. I think Wonder Woman as a film is better than you think it is. That applies even if it's your favorite movie ever made. I think I still might make you like it even more. However, if it's your least favorite movie of all time, hopefully you will gain a newfound respect for something I like to call the fetchness. Son of a damn of crap spelunky, what? Didn't, didn't we have a meeting where I said, I'm just gonna quote this off my phone here. Um, even as a temporary name, I am not okay with calling the secret sauce about Wonder Woman, the fetchness. And quote, what is happening to my show? Used to be so fetch. And last, but frankly most, Filmjoy, a channel run by Mikey Newman and his friends. Mikey probably has more of a positive impact on me than anyone else online, which, given the content of the rest of this list, really ought to tell you something. Just about everyone knows that the easiest way to get attention online is outrage. You find problems with things, be angry about them, and insult and argue with people. But Mikey goes 180 degrees in the opposite direction. 
He takes films, often ones that might not have gotten a lot of praise, and tells you why they're actually amazing and you should see them. No matter what kind of film he's talking about, no matter whether it's something I would normally have enjoyed or not, he always makes me love it by the end. And his videos about Star Wars literally make me cry tears of joy and inspiration. And then, there's Deep Dive. Folks, when I'm feeling down, which unfortunately is pretty often these days, I put on Deep Dive. It's Mikey and some of his friends sitting on a couch, eating snacks, and watching a film that's supposed to be bad, and their entire goal is to find the good in it. They talk about what happens and acknowledge the problems, but they spend most of their energy explaining why, actually, there is joy to be found in these films. They absolutely cannot fail to make me happy. And more importantly than that, they serve as a reminder that there is good in almost everything. The world these days trains us to see the bad, but we can train ourselves to see the good, and that leads to happier lives and a better world for everyone. As a matter of fact, on New Year's Eve, probably my most hated night of the year because of the many, many hours of incessant explosions around my home, I got a few people together to watch a bunch of deep dive videos on a watch together page and stave off the sensory hell. And who should show up to hang out but Mikey himself, as well as Tira, God, I hope I'm saying that right, who does some of the behind the camera work on the videos. They were super fun to chat with and the whole experience gave me the first positive New Year's Eve I've had in many years. What a bunch of absolute heroes these people are. Oh, and did I mention that Mikey has multiple sclerosis? Yeah, this dude has every reason to be frustrated and depressed and angry and negative, but instead he uses all his energy to broadcast positivity into the world. Holy crap, dude. Also, he's asexual and pretty public about that, and that's not really relevant to YouTube or whatever, but it is relevant to me personally, and it's just wonderful to have someone out there saying, yeah, this is normal. So, um, bonus thank you to Mikey for that. So is everyone feeling awesome yet? Well, we've pretty much reached the end of the video, so if I haven't managed to brighten your day myself, be sure to check out one or all of the people I just mentioned. They are far from the only positive influences I've seen online this year, but I had to limit myself here at least a little or this video would have been really, really long. If it's not already. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching till the end. Speaking of sticking around till the end, if you haven't been watching my videos to the end lately, you've been missing a lot. Just about every video I make these days has a little end credit sequence, like this one, where I send out some love and usually do something super dorky or sing a little song. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sing this time. I am very tired. Go look for songs in the other videos. Careful with the uh, Naboki one, though. I kinda accidentally made a, kind of an earworm on that one. It still gets stuck in my head, like every single day. <laughs> okay, I love you. Bye!